and she described it as grim, <laughs> grim and grey, and the people who lived in it, she expected to be similarly grim and grey, okay? However, her blog post, it was a before and after blog post, so it was before and after, and what she wrote when she visited was co the complete opposite of what she expected. And it, come, it brings me a little bit back to the football and what you mentioned about football and Margaret Thatcher and the managed decline in the 1980s because before I became a teacher I worked at a fat cigarette factory down the road, British American Tobacco, got made redundant, had to go back to university when we had two small to kids. Reinvent yourself. To reinvent yourself. We had two small kids at the time so we were fortunate because there were grants for going to university in those days and without it couldn't do now. We ran out of money at the end of the third year and dried on bank overdrafts. <coughs> so that's what we did, and that's how I ended up being a primary school teacher. And like I say, up until four years ago, that's what I did full time, and I took a big step of setting up my own company. Brings us back to football, because my company is called Rose Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> no, I'll tell you the story about Rose 7 Education. It's called Rose 7 Education, it's my technology company. What and happened on Rose 7? Well, Rose 7. When the main stand at Anfield, before it got knocked down, and we were thinking, my wife and I were thinking, what could we call our company? The row I sat on at the old main stand was row seven. So we called the company row seven education. Okay. Now, one, of the other, one of the other things we're talking about the managed decline and football and Liverpool, because an interesting fact I found today was that there's this study done of which football team voted for Remain and against uh, for Brexit, you know, kind of thing. And Liverpool is one of the, it's not quite the highest, I think Brighton's the highest football club that's voted. Liverpool got 77% of voters, of you know, people voting for Remain, and 23%, I don't know what the 23% are doing, but 23% voted not for Brexit, attention. not paying attention. Which is kind of like quite interesting because before the Champions League final, in, um, which really did, when you were there, you would be kind of like, and I've been on other European trips where people would love to come from Liverpool. They would love to be here because there were people from all over the world we met in the airport and the grounds who have this image of Liverpool being the city that it is. And if you, if you view the presentation, which I've put out on Twitter, so you can follow me or, or look for me on Twitter, you'll find this presentation there because on this little bit here, the, the New European, it's a brilliant article that was written just before the Champions League final about why Liverpool is such a European-focused city. And if you read that argument, it deals with the issues that you raised about this managed decline and all that kind of stuff, but also why Liverpool is such an outward, forward-thinking forward-looking, outward-looking kind of city, okay? And so, and, and so that's what I did, okay? And I managed to go to the House of Lords, Tim. I managed to go to the House of Lords earlier this year. Got a kind of, kind of nice award to do with education technology. So that's what I do now. Sorry, I've got to go to the next slide. Okay, now I was thinking, when I was, I'm going on a bit longer, I tried to, I was going to set the timer for 10 minutes and stop at 10 minutes, this is what I do in class, I say, I'm going to stop you for two, two minutes, and I set the timer and do it, but it sort of changed a little bit when I was listening to what people were saying, okay, now I was kind of like thinking last week, what on earth am I going to talk about when I stand up in front of everybody here, and I was watching the television, okay, and on one of the television, on one of the, this was Friday morning, Friday the 27th of July, Around about 11, I've got the film, it times it on the film, I can tell you the exact time. And somebody said the education system in this country has brought people up to think that countries coming together is a good thing. Anybody know who said that? Hunty Ferrard. Theresa May? No, Frogface. Yes, no exactly way. him. I've got the clip, I'll show you the clip at the end. Enough. Okay? He actually said that. And so I started thinking. I started thinking of things. Uh, which, why did he think, why, why did that come into his mind? And so, Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2, if you don't know, that's from uh, 4 years old to 11 years old. Key Stage 1. We've got two examples in the room somewhere. I saw them earlier. <laughs> okay, I was, going to, I, was going to get, I was going to get them to press my button so I could talk without pressing the button. At least then I know where they are. So anyway, 
these are the things we must teach at Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. These are the compulsory subjects in Key Stage 1 and Key Stage 2. The languages don't happen. No, I know. Well, that's another, that's another <laughs> issue. Okay? Schools must provide religious education, and schools often teach things like personal, social, and health, and education, history, and citizenship. So to go back to this, and I think most schools, to be honest, teach citizenship of some description. Okay? And just to go back to what uh, Mr. Farage said, it kind of like makes me think, why does, why do, why do children, why did most of the young people in this country vote for staying in Europe? Because they think countries coming together is a good thing. I kind of like looked at uh, teaching, yeah? It may have something to do with the fact that things that get taught in school may have some influence on what we think. Maybe because they think that coming together in peace is a good thing. Used to say. Secondary school, <laughs> second, secondary school, so key stage one, see that, see, see citizenship, so it, it doesn't, it's not compulsory in key stage one, key stage two, but in key stage three, it is, okay? And I was randomly going through Nick's tweets today, and I found one of the tweets that he wrote, that's him there, see that's him there, that's him, okay, that's him, and he wrote this by complete coincidence, because I was talking, I was thinking about citizenship, how young people voted in vast numbers to stay in Europe, where well, maybe the older people didn't, um, I've seen first hand the impact of philosophy for schools, in Liverpool schools, and by coincidence, Nick spoke about it today. There was no sort of connection, you know, makes a big positive impact on communication, creativity, and citizenship should be embedded into every school. So, I've, and that's what, and one of, the th one, of the, one of my adventures since I left full time teaching, I say I go on adventures. And if you look at my social media profile, it says I'm an international spy. That's what I said when I went on my international adventures to the kids back at school. I said, Why are you in a suit? I said, I'm an international spy. Okay? Well, the thing about it was this bit about creativity and citizenship and communication is such an important thing. And so I went delving further into the national curriculum. And this is key stage two advice. And this is to go back to what Nigel Farage said about <laughs> why young people, they become more mature if you teach them, if you find out about citizenship. These are the things, these are the benefits. These may be the reasons why young people voted in their numbers to stay in Europe. More mature, independent and self confident They learn about the wider world and the interdependence of communities. It sounds like a union of countries, doesn't it? They develop their sense of social justice and moral responsibility. I'm reading it to you. Do you know who, who kind of like was responsible for writing this in 2015? Do you know the person who was involved with this? Not Do Theresa you? May. Not Theresa May, no. Somebody else might surprise you a little bit more. Michael Gove. Michael Gove. Yeah. He was the Minister of Education when this was published. Yeah. Okay? If you were to ask him now... The words are cheap. Even then, the words were cheap. Yeah. Okay? But... I mean, kind somebody doesn't know the difference between the First and Second World War. Yeah, well, you know, read what he wrote. You know, that's all. That's all. Oh, I'm well, somebody wrote for him, or like somebody him. wrote for him. He was. He signed it off. That's my point yeah. about it. He signed yeah, it off. Absolutely. Okay. So that's kind of like my message about football, about <laughs> what I do, and about um, how maybe the, the influence of the education system had some influence on why I voted. And then, of course, I was thinking about stockpiling, because that's all in the news, and what we're going to stockpile. So there's a, there's a Facebook group I'm a member of, it's called Primary School Teachers, so on and so on. And I asked the question last week, what will teachers stockpile? What will keep classrooms and education system running from 2019, or whenever it is? Whiteboard markers. Need those? No, no sign of. No sign of. No sign of computerisation. No sign of computerisation. No. These are the important things. If you're a primary school teacher, pencils. You've got lots and pouches. That's maybe a bit rich. That's. You know. This is what people said. I'm just saying. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. No, I can relate. Um, Laminated these, these. Plastic uh, pockets. Plastic, yeah. plastic yeah. ones. Blue tag. And do you know the one thing I've not put on? I've missed out one thing. It's, you know where glue sticks? 
Yeah. If you've got glue sticks in your classroom, that's like currency. Oh, yeah. Sense. You know? Oh, yeah. If you've got a pack of glue sticks... Do you see this? Yeah. Can we borrow your glue I used to send... We used to have one teacher in our, in our school who used to be the expert at... Uh, Stop pack in fact she'll do well at Brexit this time. <laughs> she'll do brilliantly. She used to stockpile all the resources that we had, kind of thing. So if you if you were struggling for, for um glue sticks, you used to wait till she went out and I'd send a couple of kids around and say, You know where they are? They'd say yes. I said, whatever you do, if you don't get caught, I haven't sent you a kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a five-year-old. I've got a five-year-old who will relate to all she that. Was, yeah, she always knew who had who would, uh, who would acquire them, you know, kind of thing. So those, so teachers will have to undertake stockpiling things. Now, a couple of other things. The, this is a diagram I kind of like to use for, uh, well, the next two diagrams are things that I use to generate positive attitudes in, in, in people, whether they're big people or little people. And this is kind of like, this arrow is kind of like what people think success is a bit like. Okay? <laughs> but success is like that. But in actual fact, success is more like this in the way that it works. And to be honest, when I was thinking about this, I am denied about showing this because to me, this kind of like said to me in a completely different context that people who voted for Brexit thought Brexit was going to be like that. That's what it was going to be like. We're going to be voted, we're going to leave, that's it, everything will be hunky dory. When in fact. Turn that arrow around. Turn that arrow around. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But I'm using this in a different way. Well, that's context. life. It is life. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yes, no, absolutely. But it's, it's trying to get across to pupils that things don't, you know, things always don't go how you plan it to do. And maybe people who expected, do you know where it was the day that the votes came out? We'd been taken by, you know, Intel, the technology company? We'd been taken to Denver. So we'd left on the day of the vote. We woke up on the, oh. in Denver, Colorado, and the, all the people, and these were educators from around the world, question they asked us, what on earth have you done, kind of thing, that's what they said, you know. So, and then the next one, maybe, uh, the next one is, <coughs> this is, this is one that I use for <laughs> big people and little people for lots of reasons, because sometimes when kids get stuck with work, they have a struggle, kind of thing, and you sit on the bottom of the surface, I can't do it, kind of thing, you know, look at it. And in a way, this reflects maybe the approach that we need to take about trying to change things to the point where, where Brexit doesn't happen, you know? And I wonder, where do you think, where do you think then we are currently on the steps? Where do you think we are? I'm on the step before yeah. it's success. This one, I will yeah. do it. Yeah. That one, I That's will do it. You're just yeah. a random optimist. Right, to go, <laughs> yes. well, to, go, to, to go back to Denver though, I was kind of like, you know, sort of in this sort of bit stroppy yeah. area yeah. kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, it's happening yeah. 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 but, but things have changed, hasn't it? You know, like you were talking about the council now voting yeah, that's to, to people's votes. Things are moving. Yeah. You know? It's funny, I tend to jump between can't and can. Yeah. In between doesn't even happen. Yeah. I'll answer your question at the end because I'm just coming on to our mate Nick Farage next, okay? So <laughs> there he is on the oh God. Okay. That's a good picture. <laughs> okay. So this is uh, I will say <laughs> that he did yes. I will say that he did say no, these. No, 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 Look, it's just like being in school, up this way. Do you know what they do in school to get people listening to them? Show me your fingers, show me your fingers, show me your nose, show me your ears. Okay. So he does clarify a little bit his comments, and he's sitting with a girl from Love Island, and she became famous for not quite knowing what Brexit was going on about in Love Island. But it's interesting that he picks out Italian youngsters as being the opposite of UK youngsters, and it makes me, think, it makes me wonder why. So. Sorry, whoa, 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 go back. Okay, that's Charlie's approach to Brexit. Is this the one where she is with, where oh, he's with the sound? Go sound. Go sound. Go sound. Sound better. Sound better. Yeah. 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 Do you have to inflict this on us? Okay, so if you click on, you'll, you'll hear what he says, but it's on Good Morning Britain or Britain. Yeah, don't oh, worry, I'm going to. And they actually challenged him. Uh, 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 Dingyo and Dingyo, I can't remember the name, or, yeah. or, uh, they challenged him and he was wittering on about, yes, but the Italian students didn't, don't like, maybe they do, maybe they don't, but, you're, but he can't hear because the sound's not working, okay, but go on to my link because you'll see it there, okay, and the very last slide before I finish, 
Um, you know how um, you know how Facebook and Google Photos throw up memories from two and three and four yeah, and five yeah, and six yeah, years yeah. ago. Well, it just so happens this morning that we had one. That uh, one of these cropped up, one of these memories cropped up today. Okay, and this is my grandson Charlie. He's six now. He's in year two, and that's another thing about education as well. It's not just it's kind of like affecting us a little bit, but it's affecting them loads. It's just yes, affecting yes. those loads. And this is maybe <coughs> people like Charlie that if we are fighting for something, that it's fighting for them kind of thing. But this seemed to sum up a little bit of what Brexit is, because he was at uh, this place in Bursa called Windmill Farm, Windmill Farm, was, this is when he was about four years ago, he's just over two, I think it was, and I followed him with the camera because he's in a maze, okay? And it, uh, my symbolism for this is that if he goes to the middle of the maze, he finds, he finds this thing on the floor, you'll see what I mean in a minute, and he picks it up, and the thing he picks up is like Brexit, people have voted for Brexit, this is what he's picked up, see what happens next, okay? Because it reminds me a lot of what's going on with Brexit. It's only about 30 seconds. <laughs> there he is. Okay. He picks it up. Okay. It's Charlie. Okay. Waves it about a bit. But we've got Brexit. Yeah. Who? We won you lots. Okay. Just a minute. Just wait to. So then he decides what's he going to do with Brexit. I know. I'll go on the path to Brexit. Comes across to this path. Should I go down that way? Yes. I'm going to go that way. I'm not sure. I'm going to go that way, forward with Brexit. And there he goes, oh, until he realises, just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> that way, I'm going that way. And he disappears into the distance. Now, where Brexit will happen for us, I've got no idea. But that kind of prompt up today, and that's what we thought. Okay, so thank you very much.